I would want to say no straight up. But what's the difference between earning a high GPA and not wanting to give it away, but then earning a lot of money and also not wanting to give that away? Hmm. Well, I feel like the difference is that you you study for your grades, right? And grades often reflect how much time you spend studying. But you know, work pretty hard to become a millionaire. Hello, in this video, we're going to watch work students get challenged to actually do some critical thinking for perhaps the very first time in their lives as they get challenged with that concept and that idea that everyone seems to support until you bring it close to home and then suddenly reality kicks in. And as we do that, we're going to answer also a very pertinent question. Is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, a socialist entity and if not or if it actually is or if not what exactly is it so without further ado let's get right in I'm the phillips with campus reform today we're at florida international university talking to students about their opinions of socialism and if they'd support a socialist gpa policy would they be willing to share their high gpa with people that have a low gpa because after all it's all about equality which would you rather have in america socialism or capitalism i would say socialism how do you view the word socialism favorably or unfavorably I guess I would go with favorably. Like I have family in Europe, they go to college for free, their health care is paid for, they don't have to worry about it at all. I favor that over capitalism. Okay, got it. I also think I favor that like socialism over capitalism. Socialism is more geared toward like helping the people in your, you know, the governed. I'd rather people have that same opportunity. There's a lot of excess in America. The main idea of socialism being that people at the top are doing their fair share to help people at the bottom, trying to prevent disparity of income and trying to prevent excess, as you called it. So on campus, if there's a, a GPA disparity where there's people at the bottom with a poor GPA, mm -hmm. would you support a policy where people at the top spread the wealth and give that GPA to people at the bottom? Give, like help them get a better GPA? Yeah. I'm all for helping. I wouldn't give like, oh, let me just give you some of my points. But it's about being fair, right? We gotta help people at the bottom? I've lost a lot of sleep, so I don't know if I will be fair. It's hard. If I guess it would be kind of like hypocritical for me to say no. This is quite fascinating, you know, watching them actually put their brains to really think this through. I think this is the most important part about this video, not so much about the disparity or discrepancy in the two ideas you're trying to reconcile. And I think the best part is this lady who can for a split second realize the potential for hypocrisy in that idea so let's continue oh that's completely different <laughs> how's it different because i'm like studying all day for my grade what do you mean by sharing it like literally like giving them a chunk of my gpa yep. Yep. um dang. i would want to say no straight up but what's the difference between earning a high gpa and not wanting to give it away but then earning a lot of money and also not wanting to give that away well, I feel like the difference is that you you study for your grades, right? And grades often reflect how much time you spend studying. But you know, work pretty hard to become a millionaire. I mean, I'm not denying that fact either, but for the regular working person, you know. Do you think there's a similarity between earning your salary and, and maybe not wanting to give it away to people that aren't working to earn it? And same thing with the GPA where you earn it and you say, well, I don't necessarily want to give it to anyone who might not be working for it. Right. I think it's just that whole sense of pe thinking that no one's going to work for it. I mean, I sacrifice a lot to get my GPA. You know, I, I don't um, go out as much as I'd like to, but that's for something like a greater goal in the future, um, the way I see it. So, no, I wouldn't sacrifice my own things, like sacrifice my own time to help somebody else who um, didn't want to make those same sacrifices. There's some people who are in the bottom, but they really are working, and there's some yeah. people who are in the bottom and they deserve that yeah. poor GPA. Kind of like people making money with their income? Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like some people. <laughs> Let's not throw shade. But isn't like, it about helping the less you're fortunate? you basically profiting off of my work for you, so who's really the bad guy here? Um, I don't think that'd be a good idea because then you're taking away from people that earn that grade and what about the ones that aren't really working hard for their grades? Mm -hmm. So they're just going to get something they don't really deserve. Got it. And do you think it's similar with your salary? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. No, that's the complete opposite of meritocracy. It's okay. the complete opposite. That's like awful. <laughs> I don't think they're comparable because your GPA is not directly linked to like your quality of life necessarily. But you still have to earn it the same way you'd have to earn a salary, right? Well, I don't think most rich people in this country necessarily earn it. Much of that money is inherited. Much of that money 
you know, is from made from the stock market, which isn't, they're not actually working for that. They're pressing a button behind a computer for that. Mm. I mean, well, I mean, then there would be no point to having a GPA because then if everyone has the same, then there's no metric, right? But it's all about fairness, right? <laughs> well, like, is it fair? Like, look at it. I look at it this way, right? Mm. Is it fair for everyone to have the same outcome or to have the same opportunity, right? For me, having the same opportunity is what is fair, right? Not the same outcome, right? Because if I work harder than you and I get a better result, then it is only fair that I get a better grade or I get a better opportunity than you. Well, I think a couple of things here. The first is that we really just have to give this kid, you know, the benefit of the doubt or just give them a break because clearly there is some naivety going on here because many of them have never worked in the real world. They have never paid taxes. You hear some of the things they're saying and you realize they have no clue what they're talking about, you know this idea of free stuff you know there is no such thing as free education there is taxpayer funded education there is taxpayer funded health care but it's not free someone is paying for it as a matter of fact you will pay for it with a huge chunk of your paycheck but that now you have to justify whether it's okay if everyone has to pay a huge sum of money every month which you might not get sick it's some form of insurance why another person will get sick gets free health care or you rather keep your money and pay for yourself when you actually need the health care services and the second point is that it's so obvious that socialism simply doesn't work in practice because it brings out the worst in mankind which is laziness as pointed out by the students is if i know the top in the class is just going to share their gpa with me then why do i have to study or burn the midnight candle to get good grades? and that applies same in the real world with finances and income and earnings and that really brings us to our main focus here which is the question is the kingdom of heaven a socialist institution or is it something else you know many believers i've spoken to tend to have this notion that the kingdom of heaven is actually based on socialism or the, the kind of feel socialism is the good way to go because it's similar to what we see in scripture. A typical example is what we see in Acts chapter 5 where it says the believers were inspired and moved and they sold their property and brought the money together and they shared that accordingly to each person's need. But there is a slight difference there and that is that this isn't socialism as much as it is free will welfare. And free will is a key word there because what we see in Acts chapter 5 is that one one person saw others selling their property and then they felt they were compelled to sell their property and they sold also but they didn't bring the complete money they kept some to themselves which ended up in their debt and so the apostle speaks in verse 4 of that Acts chapter 5 telling the person why have you lied to the spirit of God wasn't the land yours before you sold it and even after you sold it wasn't the money still yours at your discretion so you didn't have to do or uh, behave as though you were being compelled you see Ananias and Sapphira his wife had the mindset and thought that what they were experiencing was a socialist system and so they were worried that others are getting what they don't deserve and so that is why they want to kind of protect their own stuff like these kids are trying to protect their gps but the apostle is telling them god works with free will so you have to be inspired from within to actually contribute to others and i think that is the main difference between what we see in the kingdom of god and the typical socialist system in that in that socialist system there is a central body that dictates and that is entrusted of course with that absolute power to actually take what you have produced and redistribute that now if there's anything we know about concentrated or central power is that it corrupts and it's very dangerous so rather what we see in scripture is no central power beyond the spirit of god inspiring people to give accordingly as they are inspired or they are led to give and so this eliminates that fear that worry that anxiety that someone else is going to benefit of which they could have worked and i think i'll conclude with what one of the students said is that they believe in equality of opportunity not equality quality of outcome because we tend to think that we are only at peace or true equality can only be achieved when everyone has the same outcome and everyone can have the same outcome 
only in poverty there is no way you can redistribute wealth and that's why all those who have set out to redistribute wealth have only ended up redistributing poverty that's the only outcome you can guarantee for everyone and so even in scriptures when the properties were sold and distributed some people took their money and maybe spent it on something worthy that benefited them long term or some people went and wasted it you see that was equal opportunity but they're going to end up with different outcomes even though they received freely so that's our time in this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss our next video and i'll be seeing you in the next one stay blessed